age range. I would personally recommend for students who are closer to graduation, that 11th grade year, who are looking to go to college, who are looking to go to a uh, four-year university, right, to get an idea of that transition. Because as, as mom and dads, as you probably know, that gap between high school and going to college is large and wide. It is a chasm that a lot of our students underestimate, I would say. And so this helps to identify well, what your classroom size is going to be like. Uh, where are the disability support services on campus if they are available? Um, an idea of a big one that I, I like to include, campus size, right? If you're thinking of going away to college, are you aware how large the campus is and where everything is? And so this helps students to understand in a very small way and a very brief overview of what that transition looks like and hopefully to help better prepare them for that next step if they're planning to go to college or for your university. Workplace readiness training. This helps twofold with the interpersonal skills that I mentioned earlier, as well as some of those technical skills. And what do I mean by that? Students who are working on their resume, students that are, are unaware of what a cover letter is, how to appropriately dress for a interview, uh, appropriate jokes <laughs> in the workplace. You know, TikTok is a very popular thing and sometimes doing those dances on site at work with your coworkers isn't always the best way to make friends at the job. And so we wanna prepare students for that transition. Uh, the interpersonal skills necessary to build rapport with your coworkers, supervisors, uh, customer relations, conflict resolution, as well as prepare them for developing a resume, a cover letter so that they can be prepared for success when they are introduced to the working world. And the last one here is the instruction in self-advocacy helping students to really advocate for themselves. As we all know, you know, sometimes you have to ask for what you want. And if you're looking to get promotions or raises in the future, helping our students to understand how to advocate for themselves, even on the smaller levels. If you were working in a bookstore and you needed a step stool to reach the books on the higher shelf, how can you advocate for yourself in a professional manner um, that allows you to reap what you need to be most successful in the workplace? And so we really wanna help our students to prepare for that uh, both those who may have had several uh, work experiences in their past as high school students and those who have none. We want to prepare them with these five services and these experiences so that when they graduate, they have an idea at least of what trajectory they want to pursue. Ah, now the vocational rehabilitation service. Now, this goal is different. On my uh, previous slide, here the goal is just to receive these services, right? These five services. We want to help you to participate in them and continue to be successful as you go throughout your high school career. Here, our goal is to obtain and maintain competitive integrated employment for a minimum of 90 days. And these are just a few of the services that we offer regarding that uh, to achieve that goal. Mm, excuse me, get a drink of water here. Now, the counseling and referral process would be with counselors like Elise and I. We will work with you to refer you to certain services and providers that could help with obtaining and maintaining that competitive integrated employment. And what that means in a nutshell, that competitive integrated employment, is really working in a place with people who don't just have disabilities, working in a job like uh, you or I would work at, where there are people of different ages, races, religions, differing different disabilities, and they also have the opportunity for promotions, right? To get raises, if someone were working there for several years, looking to become a manager, they would have that opportunity just like anyone else. And this is a part of that career decision-making, helping uh, the consumers identify what career track they're looking to pursue. Again, if they're interested in higher education, we offer assistance with that, as well as technical and vocational training. And those who are looking to perhaps go in an apprenticeship, trade school, we can explore those options as well. Um, once you begin to have that relationship with your counselor after that referral process. Assistive technology is also offered, uh, job preparation and job assistance. Uh, that really describes applying for applications, uh, well, I'm sorry, um, submitting applications and uh, the on-the-job training and support. And that's a big, that's a big piece for a lot of our uh, younger consumers or under 25, is that sometimes the on-the-job training is helpful and having that additional buffer of support will help them to develop strategies to remain on task, to be successful, getting to work on time, 
so that they can retain that position well beyond 90 days. And we also uh, work with consumers who are receiving supported employment, um, looking to receive DDA services for that long-term support. Now, our workforce and technology center is listed here um, in addition as they provide unique trainings as well such as our starbucks barista training is a very popular one we have a warehouse training we also offer the cvs retail training um, our pause program is a professional animal worker program environmental service and food service or other trainings that we offer as well so our workforce and technology center is really a hub for specialized trainings uh, and assessments, comprehensive assessments for their careers and to identify if they need assistive technology as well. Let's see here. Ah, now how will DOORS provide the services? Now, a DOORS counselor is assigned to every public high school and uh, many of the transition facilitators here, uh, I know Elise and I, as we work with Baltimore County specifically, and we do our best um, to meet these requirements. And as you can imagine, Across Baltimore County alone, there are a lot of students with IEPs, and we do our due diligence to attend as many as we can. In addition to that, we want to help and assist with those pre-employment transition service agreements, uh, and that's just stating a document that states what services that the parent and the student are agreeing to participate in um, and, what, um, and when those services are estimated to be provided. The individualized plan for employment is for the, our vocational uh, consumers who are pursuing VR, that vocational rehabilitation, and that's a plan that we're putting together step by step to help a person, again, obtain and maintain employment for 90 days and well after that. We want them to be able to retain that uh, employment as well. Uh, we're looking to provide and arrange those door services, um, the myriad of services that we provide, and we collaborate with the school, the community, workforce partners, uh, anyone who is working with your, your child, your student, we want to work with them as well. If they have a service coordinator, if they have a one-to-one, -one, if there's an aunt who really understands them and can provide some insight, we want to collaborate and be a part of that village to help them be successful across the course of their participation indoors. Right? And so the more hands that we have involved, the more successful that I believe that our students can be. And so that is what we're looking to provide here um, with our collaboration with your student, you as the family, the school system, and anyone else to help them to be successful while enrolled to do it. Now, the big question, who foots the bill? Who is paying for the door services? Now, as you can see in those big, bold black letters, we are federally and state, uh, state and federally funded, excuse me. There are no costs, there is no cost to students or their families for pre-employment transition services no cost i repeat and so if they're receiving a paid internship if they're receiving an assessment through that job exploration counseling if they're looking to go on workplace readiness no cost to students whatsoever again the main things that we need from families are the, uh, the documents that qualify that the uh the ip the doctor's note uh, as well as documentation that states that they are actively attending high school and they are enrolled. Now, there is a sliding scale based on family income for some of our VR services. We offer uh, several VR services. The ones that I showed on that previous slide were just a few. Um, and that's this one here with the counseling, career decisions, assistance, technical training, assistive technology, and the like. These are just a few of the services that we offer to consumers who are eligible for our vocational rehabilitation services. So with pre-employment, we just need that IEP, VR, there is an eligibility process to receive everything here and more. And some of those services require financial participation from the family, some. And the, how we base that is on a sliding scale that includes the family's income that helps to create a percentage on what would be included. Now, students who receive SSI or SSDI are not required to pay toward that cost unless they choose a more expensive service that would meet their needs. So that's choosing something higher than what our agency would actually provide for students who receive SSI and SSDI. Is there a waiting list for DOORS services? 
For our pre-employment transition service, our referral system has changed quite a bit, but there is no waiting list for pre-employment transition services. Once you go to our DOORS website, uh, go into that search bar, type in referral. It'll be the first link that comes up. And after that, you fill out all that information. We receive your referral. There is no waiting list. You'll receive contact within 10 days to schedule your appointment. And then moving forward, we will meet with you and your student to discuss what those pre-employment transition services are again in detail and what services you will want your student to participate in. For VR services, federal law requires that students with the most significant disabilities must be served first. And therefore, some students will be placed on a waiting list for additional DOORS services. And through our order of selection, we determine who are considered most significant disabilities based on your medical documentation that you send for your students. Um, so if you have a doctor's note, um, the IEP from the school, the educational assessment from the school, uh, a psychological assessment from the school, all that documentation is what would really assist us to make a better eligibility decision and determine their order of selection for your student based on their disability and where they would fall on that scale. If they were most significant to be served first or placed on that waiting list. Here we're discussing when a student can begin. And as I alluded to earlier, 13 is too early. However, if a student is in the eight, uh, graduating from eighth grade and beginning to enter into ninth grade, in their summer, in the summer there, that we could assist them as well. Uh, one who can continue to receive services as long as they continue to meet the definition of a student with a disability. Students who graduate, students who withdraw from school, who drop out of school, um, they would not meet this requirement as they would no longer be a student. Now for the vocational rehabilitation services, we're, again, we're looking towards that second to last year, so 19 for our certificate track students, 11th graders for our diploma track. And if eligible, again, we're combing over all your medical documentation for your student, trying to identify their most significant, uh, where are they on that process of order of service. One may continue to receive services upon exiting a school program. And so once they graduate, if they are eligible for VR services, they could, in fact, participate in these services after graduation because they are determined eligible from their medical documentation that we've received for VR services. And pre-employment, once they graduate, they no longer meet the definition of a student with a disability and students who graduate can no longer participate. So how do you begin this process? Where do we start? The best place to start is the DOORS website. Now, many of you have relationships with the school system and they may be able to assist as well with uh, placing the referral. Um, we inform all families uh, from this office the process of placing a referral and call into the office and we would uh, walk through that process with you. Uh, but the DOORS website will be the first place to go. Type in referral in that search bar in the upper left hand corner. Click that first link and there are instructions to guide you step by step on the information that we're looking for. Name of your student address, um, as well as phone number, contact information when your student is looking to graduate and what services they're looking to apply for versus uh, that pre-employment transition service or the VR. Now, there is no waiting list for the referral process for pre-employment transition services. The documentation is key. And that referral is virtual. So we don't have these. Now, online, I, I see here, this is a little dated information. Our referral is online. We do not have any paper referrals. But again, if you contact your local office, which is most likely here in Owens Mills, um, give us a call and we can walk you through that online process if you need some assistance. We'd be happy to help. And requesting pre employment transition services does not make one eligible for the individualized vocational rehab services. And this is tricky for parents because sometimes they come into this place where, I, well, he received an internship. Why can't he just get a job and help us now, help us with the job now? And that's because the services are different. We're looking for that work-based learning experience. It is an internship. Sometimes is it paid? Yes. Uh, are there uh, employers that may want to hire a student? Yes. 
that's not uh, a doors uh, sequence to employment though. Once a student has graduated high school, they are no longer a pre-employment transition service student. And just because they qualify for pre-ex because they had an IP, which is a documented disability that includes their uh, that what school they're enrolled in and the list of their disability doesn't translate into the VR where we're determining eligibility based off their barriers to employment, um, their ability to apply for positions and what makes it difficult for them to be employed on their own. So one must still apply and be found eligible for the vocational rehab services. So once you've applied for your student for the pre -ets, he's enrolled, you put in all that information, you're working with your doors counselor 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, all the way up to 19 if they're a certificate track student, contact your doors counselor to have them uh, walk you through the steps to make a vocational rehabilitation uh, referral. And that's gonna be different. The services that we discuss, the process of eligibility that will be discussed in that meeting will greatly differ from the conversation that your doors counselor will have with you regarding your student for the pre-employment transition services. And so make sure that you are contacting your doors counselor to have that conversation so that you can have a transition into the vocational services if they're looking to continue um, to seek employment after they graduate. Ah, and this is piggybacking on what I just said. So the referral process will be online. Contact your local office to get assistance. If you have any difficulty applying or the link isn't working properly, it usually is, um, but feel free to contact us uh, to walk you through that process. And again, the school system is there to help as well. They could provide some assistance. Um, or other interested parties, um, such as the community, you may be working with a service coordinator who may uh, recommend you for services if your student is enrolled in long-term employment or applying for that as well. And again, we're looking for that second to last year. So that 11th grade year for your diploma track, as well as your 19 year olds or certificate. And here, the doors counselor will work to determine your eligibility for services. Now, when you have that meeting with your doors counselor, they're gonna review a lot of information. It may feel overwhelming and may ask some questions as well, just to get an understanding of who your student is, how have things been, um, to identify what type of services that we're looking to apply for, um, what difficulties do you see that your student, that you feel he may have in applying for employment on his own? What are some of those positive attributes? What does he do well? Any marketable skills? Is he doing chores at home? Is um, are they actively doing volunteer work at all? Are they serving at their local church or synagogue, raking leaves, shoveling Mr. Wilson's snow when it comes down? These things can be transferable skills, and we wanna know that as well. Secondly, we wanna review that existing documentation and arrange for assessments if necessary. Uh, there are instances where families do not have any medical documentation. They say, well, we've known um, but we've never been to the doctor. We've never had him properly assessed at a hospital. We can work with you to get that assessment for the vocational rehabilitation services, not in the pre-employment transition services, the VR, uh, for obtaining and maintaining competitive integrated employment. And so here we could look into uh, providing you with assistance to get a, to obtain a psychological assessment that would help us to determine their eligibility. Now, of course, working with the school system, many students already have an IEP, a psychological assessment, and educational assessments. And these documentation, this documentation will help us as we review it to determine our eligibility for those door services. And the categories here are most significant. Those are the ones that federally we are serving first. Significant and non-severe disabilities are those who would be placed on the waiting list because the most significant have priority according to uh, federal regulations, and that is who we are looking to serve first and foremost. And this concludes our meeting here for pre-employment transition services. Now, I know that was a mouthful and a lot of information, so please feel free to give, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Michael uh, Bragnow. Please feel free to provide us with any questions that you have regarding the services. We'd be happy to answer them as best we can um, regarding the pre-employment transition services and the vocational rehabilitation services. Uh, 
I'm bummed that Mr. Brew left because he definitely put some hard hitting questions into that chat. And, and, and when you when you answer, then I'll take them back to Mr. Brew. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, let me scroll back up. To the first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. There, it was first about absences. OK. So if one gets into the program, but because of disability does not work every day, does he or she get fired? Attendance is important. So if one does not have good attendance because of disability, then how can he or she keep a job at doors? Um, I guess my question would be, are the absences planned absences due to disability and like doctor's appointments or are they like because of flare ups with the disability? I think that, um, I would need a little bit more information, but just with the information that I have, you know, the jobs that we're, we're helping people get are competitive and integrated. So they are jobs out in the community that anyone else can apply for. So what we would aim to do is find this person a part-time schedule that works best for them. Um, that's flexible if they have to go to medical appointments that has a supportive um, supervisory staff if this person is having unplanned absences due to um, their disability. And um, that person might want to disclose that they have a disability and are working with doors when they're hired so some accommodations can be put into place for them. So I would say it's definitely possible for this person to work with the right supports in place. That's kind of a okay. quick general Thank you. answer. Um, okay, and then scrolling down to his next question. Oh, about you, the encryption, right. There was questions about that being yeah. communicated. Yeah, so um, DOORS does keep everything confidential, of course. You know, we have access to people's records and, and um, PII and things like that. So we do have secure faxes at our office. We do have a portal link that we can provide someone um, so that they can send documentation back to us securely. And um, we also can send emails that are encrypted. Um, so if I'm ever sending someone a blank application or document that I need them to fill out and it's going to have a couple different um, you know, areas of personal information on there, I might either send it through our portal link or I'll send it in an encrypted email. That way that person can fill out the form and then send it back to me through that same encrypted email. So um, we don't have, we're, we're moving away from hard copy files now. So pretty much everything is electronic and we take that, that stuff very seriously. So there's a lot of encryption and, and a lot of attention to detail um, um, to that kind of stuff. And I can vouch for that. <laughs> I send you a lot of encrypted emails. It's kind of hard to open sometimes. Yeah, exactly. You're encrypted so well, it's hard to get through. <laughs> they are secure. So I think that there's some, this is Cindy Sabo. I'm a transition facilitator for Central Area High Schools. And I think there's some confusion on the difference between applying for pre-ETS and VR. I think I saw somebody ask that question, and that's a good one. It's one that I've had asked before. Okay, so I think the the answer to that is really where is the student? Do they want a permanent job as soon as possible? Are they in their second to last year of high school, and they want to start looking for that permanent job? Or are they still kind of exploring what they want to do? Could they benefit from some paid internships while they're still going through high school and figuring that out? So the purpose of pre-employment transition services is really just exploration and giving students opportunities to try different things and learn more about themselves um, as far as their future vocational interests. Um, the purpose of vocational rehabilitation is permanent employment. And when someone obtains permanent employment, um, on a vocational rehabilitation case type. We make sure that they're stable, that they're acclimated, that they're doing well, and then we'll close their case successfully in the end. Um, so short answer to the question is how soon does that person want to get that permanent job? Is it is it an absolute necessity for them at that time or are they content to try internships and kind of build upon the skills that they have while they're still going through high school? Do they have to 
be in the pre et system to um, enter VR? No. Okay. But if they make an application to doors through pre ets and through discussion, you see that they want to get to that permanent job placement, you can then transition them to a VR referral. Is that right? Or do they that have is, to do something yep, additional? That is correct. That happens sometimes. Sometimes people um, maybe have a pre ets referral, but they're like two months away from graduation and they're not going on, they're not going on to college or anything. So at that point, you know, it's going to make the most sense to turn that application into a vocational rehab application um, and process it that way. And how does that happen? Do you, how do you, do you guys turn it into the VR? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that happens through like our intake and our introductory <laughs> meeting and kind of me getting more details um, because, you know, there's, there's not an abundance of details that come through on a referral. It's not really until you meet with the person and sit down and talk with them. Um, that, that you can glean those those details, I suppose. All right, we do have a hand raise, Ms. Moore. Yeah, so um, with Nakia, how um, how do she fit in all, all of this? What, what school is she at? This might be an individual question that I can work with you. It depends on who your counselor or who your transition facilitator, you know, for an individual. It, which school are you at, Latrice? Um, she, goes, she goes to Dundalk High. Okay. I'm not sure who is that. Is that you, that's, Mr. Brown? That's me, oh, okay. Katie Schmidt. There you go. Hey, Katie. Yes. So I'm the transition facilitator at Dundalk High, and... Um, I am more than happy to reach out to you, um, you know, at some point later this week, or if you would like to reach out to me, whichever you would prefer. Okay. And my email is listed in the chat. Uh, oh, let's see. I believe there are two questions in the chat also. Um, one of them was, can transportation be provided and also, can DOORS support a student with getting comfortable with getting their driver's license? Okay. So, transportation is kind of tricky because we used to have a um, contract with MTA, and we don't have that anymore. So, what I typically suggest people do is apply for MTA mobility. Um, if for some reason the person um, is not able to use the traditional bus line, um, for pre we don't provide transportation. For VR, we can sometimes provide funds to help a person get to a training site that we've agreed to um, support for them. Um, it's really a case-by-case -case basis. But as far as uh, getting comfortable with a driver's license, we do offer driving assessments um, to get those approved the person needs to want a job that's going to require them to drive to it. So maybe the bus line doesn't go to that type of job. There's more opportunities off the bus line of the type of job that they're looking for. Um, and also there's 60 hours behind the wheel practice that needs to be done for someone to get their driver's license. And so someone in the family would need to agree that they're responsible for that. Um, doors can't do those 60 hours behind the wheel, but we can do a driving assessment if those kinds of caveats are met and if the person passes the driving assessment we also have um, MVA approved driver's education at the Workforce Technology Center. So I'm sorry um, that was me raising that was my question um, and I raised my hand to it so my uh, my son he we we he wasn't driving school um, he actually went through the whole process of the um, the what is it the permit class and then when he went to take his permit I don't know if he got extremely nervous but he he went three times already and he has not passed it and I think he's getting discouraged and I don't know if it's um, something that the IP can help with or um, or doors <laughs> I don't know the best way how to approach this one but I don't want to and to be honest I feel like it's a myriad of things because we'd have we're just coming out of this whole pandemic situation and I don't know if all the things that he's watched on the news 
has discouraged him about getting driving, but or doing driving. I don't know, but I don't want him to. I don't want him to stop his process, but it seems like every time, and I'm trying to keep encouraging to stay with doing this, getting your learner's permit so that you can take the next step. But I, I, if he goes in there one more time and not pass, I think I'm going to lose him in getting, you know, and along this process. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, or maybe you guys can provide advice on um, what's the best approach or, or I, a counselor. Yeah, can I, yeah I've, I've worked with this before. Um, can you tell me again what school you're with? So we, he attends, um, uh, oh wait, I was about to say Randallstown, Lord have mercy. Um, what school does he go to? I just had a brain <laughs> fart. Okay. I, he is gone. at Franklin Oh, Franklin, Lord, he's at Franklin. Franklin. Yes. Okay. I don't know why Randall kept coming in my head. It's yeah, Franklin. Well, <laughs> that would be um that would be mine. That would Ms. be Duncan, yours, Ms. Um, Robinson. And, Laura and, Robinson, I, I'm your transition facilitator. I will yeah. reach out to you or you can reach out to me this week and we'll uh we'll chat some more. Yeah. I think you know who I am anyway, right? I believe so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's my question. I don't think we never really got to talk about the what the details was when it came to my son but yeah that's what it is we'll talk soon yes thank you okay um yeah and i would just suggest uh <clears throat> having him access any kind of accommodations he could at the mba um they, like having they the will. and and i was gonna say that too that they will depending on his iep and that i would want to read that first to to give that, but if they if he has anything for reading, um, they can read it to him, and he can take it on the uh, computer. There's different ways to take the test, but they're very accommodating to our students with an IEP. He just has to take that in. But I'll let Miss Robinson work with you about that, ma'am, because we'd have to look at his individual IEP and see if it has those accommodations on it. You see? Sure, no problem. Okay, thank good. you. Mm -hmm. And somebody just posted that there's an app for that that you can use as practice as well. Oh yeah, yeah, there's lots of practice on that, but you know, they're, they're very nice. Yeah, I've, the MBA really, they really come through on that. They, they will read it to them and, and help them too. So good. So, so and, I, and let me just kind of clarify the next step too, because I, and I'm sorry, I don't want to take up too much time, but the, the when I wanted to talk about the driving, and I guess I'll talk to Ms. Robinson more about it but when he physically gets in the car and and just being stopped by the police and and how to deal with that with his IEP and and the best way to approach it so I'm looking for the all around experience not just him passing and getting his license but that next step of not getting nervous when the police because of what things have taken place and what they've seen so yeah I'm sorry I don't want to take up too much time <laughs> I know that I've um, come across a resource um, for for folks with different diagnoses to prepare for and know how to deal with police stops. So I will look um, for that in my email archives and I'll send it um, to Jen and you can, Jen, you can pass it on. Um, That's interesting too. Yeah, it was, it was like some classes um, a year or two ago. I think there's, they're probably still going on, but um, I just want to quickly answer Heather Burns' question in the chat, um, her son, attends Kennedy Krieger, would he be eligible since it's a separate non-public school? Um, yes, he would be eligible as long as he's between 14 and 22, has an IEP or a documented diagnosis of some sort, and there are opportunities for just summer employment. So we can do internships in the summer um, with any of our vendors that we use that have year-round internships, and then there's also the Baltimore County Summer Youth Employment Program um that we do with the department of economic and workforce development so um yes he would be eligible and and yes you can just do stuff in the summer and that's fine i think the next person is miss schmidt hi this is actually a question back to miss moore miss moore you were contacting me about your daughter nahia at dundalk high yes ma'am I believe her transition facilitator is Greg Collins, and I will put his email in the chat to you 
And I will also let him know that you have some transition related questions so that he can also reach out to you. Okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome. I think there was one more question in the chat that um, hasn't been addressed yet, and that is eligibility for students attending um, non-public schools. Um, okay. And opportunities for just summer employment. I think I just answered the summer employment one. Um, yeah, I, I think that one was pretty clear, but they were within I, the same, so I just mentioned it. I had asked, do you still, because. Uh, do you still have the, the pathways program? Yes, we do. Yes. Is that, can you like just kind of describe that very briefly? Like if that's under VR, am I right? Yes. So pathways under VR is uh, some extra support for individuals who have a diagnosis of autism and are going to college. So to qualify for pathway, pathways, doors also has to agree that you're a good candidate for college and that the degree you're pursuing in college matches up with your stated employment goal. So first we have to determine what that employment goal is and what services are needed to get that employment goal. And one of those has to be college training. And um, Pathways is like extra support um, as far as you get a, a mentor to work with to make sure that you are um, balancing your time well, that you're, you know, making time for yourself to complete your assignments. There's some social group aspects to it, um, things like that. Um, and I have a, a flyer I can send um, you, Jen, that you can disseminate how you wish. Yeah, um, is, uh, is that, um, you had, they partner with pretty much every college in the area or there's certain ones or? Uh, Pathways is mostly um, CCBC, like uh, Towson University, UMBC. Um, but we also have another new program called VCAMP, which is effectively the same thing, but you don't need a diagnosis of, of autism. Um, it's for anyone with a, a di disability who has college training on their doors plan um, to give them that extra support with like executive functioning kind of things. And Ms. Sedlander, that's a new one for me. I think probably a couple of us actually. Are you, and they put in the, the, the closed caption, it said VAMP. B A M P. How are you saying it? Doesn't always translate. Uh, it's V C A M P. So I forget right. what the acronym is. V Camp. Um, That's okay. -camp. I won't remember it yeah. anyway. <laughs> uh, v Camp. I'll remember. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll look into that. Thank you. Um. What else here? Is there any questions we haven't asked? You can speak up. Mm. Mrs. Carter, you look like you might have a question. Do you have a question? <laughs> no, okay. Oh, there's a question here. Um, how do you how do you uh, apply for the V camp? Would that be in direction through you all when they apply for their pre -ets or that V camp is going to fall under vocational rehab. V yeah. So so you have to apply for the vocational rehabilitation camp. You need to have a um, job goal that requires college training or college education. Doors needs to agree that college is a good fit for that person and that the job goal that they're pursuing is competitive and integrated. So someone could be like the best basket weaver, but Doors doesn't necessarily want to send you to CCBC for a basket weaving certification because there's not tons of jobs like that out there, right? We want you be, to be able to get the job that you're trained in. Um, so if Doors agrees to all that um, and we have college on your plan, then that's how we can add fee camp to your plan, that extra support. Good to know. Does DOORS help with providing or offering scholarships for college? So <clears throat> DOORS has funding that can assist with college tuition and fees, but when you're going through that college process, um, we also ask that you 
do the FAFSA and apply for that Pell Grant. Since our funding is limited, we need to look at all the comparable options um, because DOORS alone can't fund an entire um, college education. What if you don't um, typically qualify for like the Pell Grant? Can you still get DOORS money? Typically, um, it's it's going to depend on each individual. So we would still have you apply for the FAFSA, just so we would have the documentation that you applied and, and weren't a candidate. Um, and then we're going to look at that financial participation scale in comparison to how much college costs. So depending on, <clears throat> sorry, um, how many dependents you have in your household, what your annual income is, there's a percentage that um, the family would be expected to contribute um, before DOORS does. And then also uh, until 60 credits, until the student has met 60 credits, then we only pay up to, I think, Montgomery County community college rates. It's off the top of my head. I've done, I have a few college plans on my caseload, but they're, they're not the majority of what, of what we do. Thank you. Yep. Well, there's a pause. Does that mean we're through drilling these guys? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Kind of like when you take petals of a a flower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're through. We're not through. <laughs> and again, if there are any questions that anyone thinks about later, uh, talks with a, another parent and comes up with a question, feel free to talk to your transition facilitators. They can relate the questions to us or just call your local doors office as well. Thank you. I appreciate all of this. This was great. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and Thank stop you. the recording here so I can save it before everybody jumps off, and then we should be good to go. Thank you all for joining us tonight. How, how do we get the recording? How do, how do we get the recording? If you go to your individual uh, transition facility,